is one with Brahman, with God. The yogi who is pure from shortcomings ever prays in this harmony, and the soul soon feels this joy of eternity, this bliss. This infinite joy of union with God, union with Brahman, again, one oneness with Brahman, having attained a union with the principle of the universe, this nirvana state of total bliss. Again, total repetition, right? I mean, we've got almost a repetition there. 35. The mind is a restless thing. Krishna, Arjuna. Krishna talking to Arjuna. It's hard to train, but it's through practice, constant practice. That's what yoga is. Keep on practicing, practicing, practicing. The same as a runner practicing. You know, you keep on practicing jumping over the vaulting horse. You keep on practice throwing the forward pad to the receiver. So, so slowly, you keep on practicing shooting the basket. By well, this constant practice and repetition. You can attain freedom of the passions, and the mind can be trained. Is that true? Yeah, I think it can. I think it can. Because a lot of these people just have had a poor upbringing. You know, no one's been around that and really trained them, or helped them out a little bit when they were young. They have to do it all themselves. They find that when they're grown up, you know, they have to do it by themselves, and it's, uh, it's not easy if someone has to curb certain things right from the start. People need help and training to overcome some of this disorder, put it that way. Because otherwise, things are very chaotic. So when the mind is not in harmony, this divine communion can be, can be achieved. But the man, man who, or woman who has a harmonious mind, he can strive and he can get there. So Krishna, be a light, mind 39, unto me. And such people, Krishna said, this world doesn't come anymore, 40. And the man who does this kind of thing never treads the path of death. So once again, again, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, Paul says, I am no Christian. Um, the aim is overcoming death always in many of these activities, in many of these religious pursuits. And death is something that weighs very heavily, as we know, on a lot of people. The more as you get closer to it, you know, you sort of, when you're young, you say, ah, that's far away, I worry about that now. But, uh, you know, the closer you get, uh, the more you start to worry about it. And uh, people are trying to find a way out. This is one way that they've, they've developed. Christianity is another way. So, you don't get, uh, you don't feel death. 43, you begin your new life with the wisdom of the former life. There's that remembering the past, that Plato tried to claim Socrates proved by his discussion with his students. And, uh, and then you can start from there. Then this yogi ever striving, 45, with his soul pure from evil shortcomings or whatever, attains perfection through many lives. If you keep on striving through these lives, you'll finally get there. Well, because the yogi goes beyond those who only follow the path of the austere or the wisdom of work. Greatest of all yogis is he with all his soul. I don't understand that, because that's already has become a little bit more uh, Paul Paul like with uh, his faith is coming to and he loves me. Uh, I'm not sure that's how that would have been put in the in the original. Uh, seven. Talks about Om, which is this word that if you repeat like a mantra, often enough it orders your mind in some way. I am the taste of living waters, eight. I am Om, the sacred word of the Vedas, the previous literature. The Vedas were the previous literature. And uh, a sound in silence. Uh, again, uh, Krishna holding forth on how wonderful he is. Line 24. They know not my higher nature, perishable supreme, for my glory is not seen by all. So that's the lecture on Krishna's glorious, super being nature. Eight. Who is Brahman? Who is Atman? What is karma? What is 
the kingdom of the earth? Who offers the sacrifice of the body? So we're back to the, to the beginning again. But I think eight is basically where we can, well, there's more.